Hello friends. This is our 11th lecture on the archetypes of literature. And we can see the central myth of literature. That is the quest myth. That is the lost and found. Simple language, lost and found. Or to use the language of children, hide and seek. This is the central myth of all literature in any a literary form uh, uh, or a work you take, you will find basically this is the expansion of that will be that book is an expansion of hide and seek or lost and found or the quest myth. That is the thing. See, it is a function of the critic to show that all genres of literary literature are derived from the quest myth. So, introduction to any text on criticism should start with this quest myth. And uh, it should, uh, he should point out that all the literary forms have been derived from the quest myth. Quest myth. This is the duty of the critic, according to our North Rough Right. Uh, where will you find the comprehensive view of this quest myth? That you will find, or all the myths, you can say. A comprehensive view of the archetypes, you can say. Archetypes, means recurring themes. You will find it in sacred scriptures of religions. That's the thing. All the shamans you will find. And then, as you can see, drama. Drama. It is the, from the ritual side of the myth, descended from the rituals, originated from the ritual side of the myth. Miracle place and the morality place. See that? A lyrics from epiphany. Epiphany is meaning or revelation. For example, uh, daffodils. That is a revelation to, uh, uh, that is a revelation that, uh, that happened in the mind of, a uh, meaning. A new meaning, revolution means a new meaning that is that's happened in the mind of Wordsworth. Epic lyrics, lyrics and other forms of poetry. Then epic, epic of course we can say carries on with the uh, central quest myth. You can see the beowulf. No? That's an epic. Beowulf is an epic. epic. Then Homer's Iliad is an epic. Epic, Odyssey is an epic. You see that a central myth is there always. And uh, the epic carries on with that. Another point to note that criticism and religion they are related. In what way? In the way that divine characters in the scriptures, they are only human uh, characters in the human story. You see, for example, paradise lost, there is the God. You can see the Bible, there is God. You can consider as a piece of literature, Bible. Old, Old Testament, for example. Old Testament, God appears, God is anthropomo anthropomorphic. <laughs> Anthropos. Anthropos means man. Morph, morphine or she. So, anthropomorphic. That is, that is the appearance of God in the Bible. Andropro, andro, andropos, andro, andropromorphic. Means God appearing in the form of a human being. You can see in the early part of the Bible, in the Old Testament, God comes down every evening and have evening work with Adam and Eve. So that's a human character. Bible in the in the paradise lost also. Uh, he, God is presented as a human character. All epiphany, and at the third point today is all epiphanies originate in dreams. And all the meanings originate in the mind. That is dream. The dreaming is an activity of the mind. And in dreaming, Meaning is originator. Uh, that is what, what we find in, in human cycle, life of human cycle. There are two 
two aspects. One is waking, the other is dreaming. One is waking and the other is dreaming. Now Plato has said, <laughs> dream means not your daydreaming. It's very important to note the idea. Plato has said, art is the dream of awakened minds. What does that mean? Art is the dream of awakened minds. That means imagination. Only an awakened mind can Im imagine things. Art is not fact. Nothing actual or factual in art. You have only what is conceivable. Conceivable imagination. A theory of imagination called it. Aristotle's definition, improbable probabilities and probable improbabilities. Same thing. Same thing. So there you are. So only a waking mind can dream. And dream produces meaning. And dream can originate only in the mind of the human beings. And then ultimately, according to Northrop Frey, there are only two visions or two possible imaginations, basically. Or two possible meanings. Or again I would say two possible epiphanies. Or I would say two possible recurring themes. Or two possible archetypes. And what are they? They are first is comic vision. Comic. And second is a tragic vision. Comic vision and a tragic vision. See what I have been telling you so far is all the literary forms are derived from quest myth. Because quest myth is the central myth of literacy. Ritual side you have got drama for example, I have example drama and so on. And we saw that <coughs> comprehensive view <coughs> sorry, of the question you will get in the sacred scriptures of <coughs> religions. You understand? Yes. And we saw that the supernatural beings in in supernatural stories, uh, in human stories, they, they are only humans. They appear as humans. For example, God in Paradise Lost. Fine. And in humans, for humans, there are two cycles. One is waking, the other is dreaming. And all the art originates in dreaming. Dreaming means, you should look at Plato. Plato says, art is the dream of awakened mind. That is imagination. There is nothing factual or actual in, in religion. Literature, you have only conceivable things. So, quest myth is an attempt. That's again you understand. Quest myth is an attempt to combine human and natural powers in ritual. Did you get that point? When human and natural powers are combined, human efforts, natural powers, human power and natural power combine uh, then what happens is there is ritual and that is for what? it is a quest quest for what? pleasing pleasing the higher deities that is the myth so the quest myth is an attempt to combine human and natural uh, process you can see in a ritual for example, fertility ritual. You throw Atis Adonis Osiris into the night. Now, for what, for what is the purpose of that? To please the gods of, that is vegetative myths now. Connected with vegetation, vegetative myths. Or revival myth, you can say. Revival. Harvest is over. They throw, then reclaim, then they revive. Revival and resurrection. So what is happening is you, when you are throwing, you are searching for something. 
there is a quest there what is the quest to please the gods and also and get by the lost vulnerability of the land sorry when perseval goes after a quest of the holy grail for what it is for healing the wounded fisher king that's one way you find it in the the wasteland so there is a human effort this there human effort combined with natural powers so natural powers so for example you your effort and the uh, the the powers of nature you take say so, say so you you take the help of a horse that is a natural power the power of the nature or you take the help of wind or you take the help of light or you take the help of uh, says uh, fire yes. so this is human effort and natural see natural powers you combine then a ritual is made and that ritual is a quest myth because you are doing it for some purpose there is an aim you are writing you are studying for ma is a quest myth why because you are combining your effort human power as well as natural see the human and nature coming coming to the the quest is first trying for you in your examination so that is a ritual actually your study study program is a ritual in that way if you argue it in this line if you take it in this line so fertility means self rituals to please the sun god rituals to please the wind god rituals to please the rain god see so what happens is there is a, you are combining your powers with the power of nature so that is ritual so we are seeing no? all ritual originate in ritual so this is what uh, basically this is the meaning of that, uh, that that statement basically the quest there are and then we saw no there are only two possible quest myths or visions you can say and one is a comic vision and the other is a tragic vision that also is now this comic and tragic visions you have in all the four worlds the human world for five worlds the human world supernatural animal world then vegetable vegetation and you have got mineral world i will write down this tragic and tra comic and tragic vision you will find in the human human divine supernatural animal world animal world human world you can say divine animal vegetable vegetable five mineral so what do you mean by this this thing i i i will just taking today you will just take one today see that he has given tables like this in the book tables in the human world suppose it is a comic vision or as in simple language we say comedy the quest is for happiness suppose the questing is for happiness then what will you find in the human world in the human world you will find it. there is a community of people is a community of people the world is a community love of love it is represented by a hero then the hero fulfills the wishes of the reader or the community archetypal images are of communion symbolism order friendship love marriage entry into paradise triumph so the human world the comic vision of the human world is like this there is love there is friendship there is a um, feeling of um, oneness there is a hero there is a community of people 
there is a symposium and the comment of the people is represented by a hero and hero goes for the quest. Finally, hero achieves the quest. And then probably maybe a marriage or some successful events. If you see uh, the see the the uh, comedy for example, any comedy is like that. You can see that any comedy you will find it like that. there are person. See Percival for example, it's a comic vision. He's going in search of this. So then he is there are uh, natural powers helping supernatural powers. There's a community so there's a love. And suppose. And there is a tragic mission in the human world that is a tragic quest or a tragic meaning. Vision means meaning, uh, epiphany or revelation or anything like that. Suppose, because literature, after all, any form of, all the forms of literature you will find that either uh, they carry a comic vision or they carry a tragic vision. So if it is tragic vision, what happened? There is tyranny, anarchy, isolation of the individual. The leader is betrayed. Within uh, the the leader, so not the leader is the leader looks back. The leader uh, looks uh, does, does not consider his followers. The bullying giant is there of the romance. Then you will find uh, the deserted person, the betrayed hero, the harlot the witches, other varieties of Jung's terrible mother. Terrible mother, that means Lady Macbeth is a terrible mother. See, variety of Jung, Jung is Carl Jung, terrible mother. Other, see, the, in the papers we can see, you know, mother, mothers killing their babies. So that, or mothers aborting their babies. That is a terrible mother. That's the archetypes of terrible mother. The best one we can see that of Lady Macbeth. Lady Macbeth I don't know whether here, how many children does Lady, Lady Macbeth have? Some critic, I think, has written an essay on that. I don't know. <laughs> I have heard like this. Now, that is the image of the terrible mother. So, in the papers, you will come across this one. So, one is the tragic world, the other is the comic world. A comic vision. Comic, comedy doesn't mean that what you see in the films. Comedy of Comedy performed by a film star, not that way. The happiness, the general happiness. Now, both tragic and comic you will find in the birth of Jesus Christ. See, suppose you see, when, the, when Jesus was born, the shepherds come, they sing song. See, they are, the Magi, they come from the East with uh, uh, gifts and so on. There is a rejoicing everywhere. The supernatural world comes down, and then they also. Rejoice. So that is a comic vision, community as well. Then there is a tragic vision. There is a uh, the Herod. Herod and his followers, his friends, they want to somehow manage to annihilate Jesus. And then the, he kills all the children below uh, two years or so. Isn't it? What a cry. Imagine that cry of those mothers, miserable cry of those mothers. You must have seen paintings now. Snatching the baby and then cutting him into two or three with the drawn sword of the soldiers of hell. So one is comic vision, the other is tragic vision. I think that is now very clear. Same thing you will find the Lord Krishna, the birth of Lord Krishna. There is a comic vision and there is a tragic vision. In day to day life, you will find comic vision and tragic vision. Isn't it? When there is a, a meeting of friends, say your social get together in the college, it is a comic vision. Suppose you have got a quarrel between two, two parties, means two groups representing political parties in the, on the campus, and that is a tragic vision. So there are only two visions in literature according to, and both are, they both come under the quest myth. Because both visions, they, they are searching for something. They are after something. What are they after? For one it is uh, 
a pleasurable situation, creating a very pleasurable situation of happiness, the other it is destruction. So this is uh, this is what is meant by saying a comic vision and tragic vision. And both these originate in dreams, means meanings. And dreams means mind of the human beings. The origin is mind of the human beings. And the mind of the human beings originate, if you go a step back, you will find the origin is in rituals. And rituals, what is rituals? Rituals means combining the powers of the humans and natural for pleasing another, a third. And that is again a quest. We will fight all you. Iliad. So, this is, where, this is how very, in a foolproof argument that we can say. You cannot but believe what Northrop Fry is trying to tell you. Take any book. Take a novel, take a... Uh, see, let's take uh, the example of, I uh, say, the, the Whistler, which is a very famous poem. So you have got the tragic and the comic right in the very beginning. The comic, April is the, sorry, tragic mission, April is the cruelest month. Breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire. Stirring dull roots with the spring of air. So, winter kept us warm, feeling a little life with dried tubers. Suddenly the, so the, the comic mission comes. Summer surprised us with a shower of rain. So, and the surging and all those things. And again, what are the roots, the cloth, what branches grow out of this stony rubbish, son of man, you cannot say or guess for you, know, only heap of broken images. That is tragic wish. <laughs> if you argue against it. I hope you are following. Fine, thank you very much for listening. Come again for the next class, which will not be, which will be, say, we will have it in two or three days' time. So, as I told you the other day, two or three lectures more, and then this will be over. We will take over something else, something else of your interest. Okay? Till then, bye.